it drives me crazy. I can't listen to talk radio much anymore because of that dynamic. And it, it's 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 sad because I miss a lot that I can read these hosts in print a lot easier than I can listen. And yet there are people who who need that voice to get through their day. And I understand why. They feel beat down. They feel completely uh, surrounded. And it's someone saying what they want to say. But I keep coming back to the concept that the job of the radio host is the pep rally job. It's to uh, get you excited and keep you motivated and inform you about what's going on. But it's not the only voice you should have access to. The movement needs not only the cheerleaders and the warriors, but also the the evangelists and the people who go out and and witness and talk about uh, the concepts that we're that we're doing to communities that we don't go to. And when you have one division of your army doing something that is affecting the work of the people in another division, it gets a little testy. It gets a little difficult to work in that environment because you're, you're constantly having to undo damage done by another portion of the movement. That's worrisome to me. I, I think, and, and if you were to say it to someone that way, you know, well, I'm having to go out there and undo the damage that Levin is doing every day. It's kind of smarmy and, and you know, I, what's the word I'm... I'm thinking about it. it's just superior to say it that way um, you may think it really loud but instead you're trying to explain that there are different voices that need to be heard and the goal is a far bigger one than just feeling good about what you believe just feeling as though you're not alone if you want your feelings to be stroked and, and you know, validated that's one thing but that's not the job of the movement as the whole of the whole to make everyone feel good about what they believe it's to actually implement the things that we believe and that takes more than just someone on the radio well and yeah. I think it's, it's really important that we respect the different niches that each of us have because that's something that I've been noticing lately is that if you unless you are exactly like me, then I'm not going to agree with you, and I'm not going to work with you. That's the way Democrats are. That's not how Republicans and conservatives should be. We should realize that the reason we're conservatives is because we are all different. We all do think for ourselves. The people I can reach are totally different than the people that Fishy can reach, or that JD can reach, or that Leslie can re reach, etc. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. And um, we actually have experienced a lot of that type of criticism ever since we released our pro-fracking ad. We have gotten pure out hate mail from conservatives who said that they hate the ad, that they could never work with us, that they can't believe we would put something out like this. And just a little background, the ad is... Because it's pro-fracking? No, that's not why they don't like it. They don't like it because it's silly, it's comical, it's flat out ridiculous at some points, but it's designed to reach the apolitical 20-something millennials. Okay, they are the ones who are watching Comedy Central. They're the ones who are watching Family Guy and South Park. They like that type of humor. We're not trying to reach the conservative Christian right middle-aged family who's sitting at home and watching Little House on the Prairie. Okay, we're trying to reach a totally different demographic that a lot of Republicans can't reach. And so we've just been really working with the people who have brought concerns to us and explained to them, look, there are multiple kinds of ads, multiple kinds of messaging out there, and they all reach different people. Something that interests me isn't going to interest you. So let's work together, let's crisscross our efforts, and let's reach a wider audience. That's what we're trying to do, but we'll see if it's working. I don't know. <laughs> Well, and these these are concepts that people understand in non-political context, context um, because they understand that a company is going to create a different ad to run on Lifetime than they than the ad that they run on ESPN. Right. And so you're going to create different materials to target the college audience who is very concerned about fracking than than to target somebody who is, you know 
looking at reading reading papers from the American Enterprise Institute. I mean, it's totally different groups of people, so you have totally different con different uh, content to reach them. And you know, are you trying to inform somebody about a policy, or are you trying to broaden the tent and give somebody just a little bit of a smidgen of an idea that Republicans are not the bad guy? Right, and that Republicans can be fun and they can be current. Right, and and people understand this in context of advertising. You know, Apple advertising is not the same on every different show. Beer advertising, although I can't think of a beer company that advertises on Lifetime Channel, so... <laughs> okay, the... And and I don't know that Mass and Gill advertises during ESPN, so... <laughs> there are some limits to my comparison. 